Now let's go ahead and talk about how to route MIDI effects out of the Reason Rack device. This will enable us to use all of Reason's creative MIDI effects plugins, especially the player devices inside of Ableton, to control the Ableton instruments and musical devices. So an important note for Ableton users here is you want to make sure that you're using the VST3 version and not the audio units version, because for some reason, if you're routing MIDI out of the Reason plugin, it doesn't really like the audio units plugin. It kind of sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. So just make sure for this video that you're using the VST3 version. If you're in Logic Pro, AU version works totally fine, but it just is something with Ableton that it could be a bit finicky. So you want to make sure that you're using the VST3 version here. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a simple pad patch using analog to basically mess around with with these player devices. So let me just drag and drop this in. We'll make something super, super simple. Drop that low pass filter down, extend that filter decay. Maybe add a little bit of darkness by reducing the filter frequency. Maybe add a touch of modulation. Let's use the pitch and modulation effects. A little bit of chorus. And there we go, we have something a bit interesting to work with. And that's just this simple patch in analog. And then let's go ahead and hop over to our plugins. And we can go ahead and load in the Reason plugin. So for this, we're gonna be sending MIDI information from Reason to the synthesizer patch. So let's create a MIDI track. We can just name this Reason. So I'll hit Command and R or Control and R to rename this. And that way we have uh, that basically renamed. Let's grab the Reason Rack plugin. I want to use the rack version of this, uh, by the way, for this. So not the effects version. And then let's go ahead and load up a player device because we'll be feeding the MIDI information from Reason into the synth. So let's open up our browser, go over to Players, which is all of our cool MIDI devices. And let's start off simple. Let's use these scales and chords from Reason, which will basically enable us to select a scale and it'll automatically give us chords. It's a very, very lovely interface and it's really nice and easy to use. And the cool thing is now we can use this inside of Ableton. So as you noticed, whenever I drag and drop this in, we have this player device, and then we have this new device here that's not traditionally there whenever using this in the standalone version, and that is the MIDI output device. This will take the MIDI information from this plugin and we'll feed it out into Ableton so that it can be interpreted by our synth track. The cool thing is you don't actually have to change anything here, so don't worry about the MIDI channels or even the routing at the back of this yet. It'll all be set up automatically, which is rather nice. So let's go ahead and close that out. And then what we want to do is go ahead and jump into our mixer section so we can kind of see the full window here. We can view them side by side for the MIDI inputs and outputs, just making it a little bit easier. But the first thing that we'll do is go over to our synth track and set the monitor to input. So that way, anytime information is being played on the Reason channel and it's being sent to this device, we can always hear what it's playing. We don't have to have this record enabled and send MIDI data to it, it'll always be able to be heard. So that's super important. The first step is to set that to in. And then on the MIDI from, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this, go down to Reason or whatever this is uh, selected on your device, hit Reason, and then on the secondary dropdown, this is super important, you wanna select the Reason Rack plugin. If you don't see this option available, you just see pre-effects and post-effects, then chances are you're in the AU version of this plugin, and you need to make sure that the VST3 version is loaded for Ableton. So in Ableton, if you just see these first two, make sure the proper plugin is installed. So that is set for the MIDI from settings. Now, whenever I press a key on my keyboard, you can hear that it is playing back a chord. If I was to open up the Reason Rack plugin, we get these nice chords. I can add an octave up, an octave down, This could be a really excellent way to start a song. So now I have some really nice chords that are being fed out of reason into my Ableton synth. And the other thing that I like to do usually whenever I have reason set up as a MIDI effect like this, is I like to select both of these tracks and just hit Command and G to group or Control and G. You can also right click on them and hit group. So I can select these and then hit a group tracks here at the bottom. But that way it kind of keeps everything organized. So I just have both of those tracks all in one section. So that way, if I'm sequencing it, it's just one singular track. So we can name this synth. And then that way, it just keeps everything organized. We can also right-click on this and change the colors to all the same down there at the bottom. And then now, if I go in and sequence up Reason, so let's say I have this note here. It's playing back those notes on the synth, and it's all being routed into one group inside of Ableton. 
just helps keep everything a little bit more organized. Now the cool thing is, we have the option to stack the different player devices inside of Reason. So we can actually go rather crazy with this, so let's go ahead and just grab the dual arpeggio, and all I have to do is drag and drop that so it sits underneath the scales and chords. Make sure to not drag and drop it below the MIDI output, you want to drag and drop it right here. And then now, we're basically taking information from my synth and running it through the scales and chords and also the dual arpeggiator. And the cool thing is all the presets work here too. So we could grab any of these cool presets. Maybe try this one. It got all sorts of cool options available in my production. That one's really lovely. And then I could use that to start off a song project. So you can go even further with this and drag in any of these other devices to modify your signal if you wish. But let's say you have this MIDI information, you like the sequence that it's doing, but you want to edit some of the individual notes that are present in that musical sequence in their traditional MIDI editor. The cool thing is it's super easy to get the MIDI output from Reason into Ableton. All you have to do is create a new MIDI track. So I'll go ahead and create Insert MIDI Track. And then what you need to do is set the MIDI to the Reason inputs and the Reason Rack plugin. So once you set those both of those two dropdowns here, go ahead and record and enable that. And let's go ahead and just create a simple sequence here. By the way, let's just create a, a simple C note in the octave of C4. And then all I have to do is record this, and it will basically take all the MIDI information from this track and then put it down onto a track inside of Ableton. And then now if we go ahead and slice that and open it up, it's giving me this very complex arpeggio pattern that Reason is playing. And then I could go through and edit, edit that accordingly. So then I could go ahead and put that over to this track over here, change that input to auto. And now I could just play that around, maybe change the octave or adjust its position or change any of those individual notes. So I could even take that first note, put it up an octave. So that just gives me a lot of advanced control over the way that MIDI can be used out of the Reason Rack plugin. So there's a lot of different options. Now the next thing I want to talk about is how to get a MIDI pattern out of Reason. So let's say for example, you want to take the Dr. Octorex loop player, which basically goes through and slices up loops and basically enables you to resequence them. And you want to take that loop pattern and you want to drop that into Ableton so you can do all sorts of interesting beat juggles on a drum break, for example. So let's go ahead and load that up and I'll show you how this works. Now let's go ahead and just turn off everything here and just minimize it so it's a bit simpler to see. And let's grab the Reason Rack plugin again, load up the Dr. Octo Rex, and let's go ahead and just find an interesting drum loop to juggle here. So maybe go to drums, acoustic drums, could do uh, vintage, could be quite fun. And let's just grab any of these. If I hit run, it'll play back my pattern, which sounds like this. And then you can see that there's these individual slices present on this device, and you can actually play them via MIDI. So if I want to take that whole loop and have it sequenced back inside of my drum sequencer, all I have to do is I just can just click on this and drag and drop. So I'll click on this, it copies over that entire MIDI pattern. And then we can hit no for this. We don't want to insert the uh, tempo data. So we'll hit that. And now I have that drum loop being played back inside of Ableton. It is important to turn off enable loop playback on this. So that way they don't play back at the same time. And then this gives me the ability to basically go through and re-edit that drum sequence. I can even do something like this, remove those, uh, and create my own custom sequences. So I can even chop that and reorganize that sample to create my own drum breaks. So that's how you can pull MIDI information out of Reason and put it inside of Ableton. This also works for things like the different drum machines as well. So if I was to remove this, load up the Red Drum Drum Computer, and maybe grab a couple of kick drums here, I can click on this, drag it, and basically get my loop inside of my session. Let me make sure that it's uh, pulled back to the right position here. So let's click on this, drag it to the start of the bar. We'll hit no again on the import tempo and time signature data, because we don't want to change that in our session. Then we take a look at this, you could see that it has imported my drum pattern that I've created. So that's really nice because you can basically just pull all that MIDI information out of Reason really, really easily, and you can get the best of both of those different workflows.
So that's everything that you can do inside of Ableton for the MIDI output with the Reason Rack. The only important thing to note is that currently control voltage inside of Ableton is not supported. This has to do with the way that Ableton is set up. So if we take a look at the uh, device here, on the bottom you have some additional control voltage inputs and outputs available. This is something that's not currently supported inside of Ableton, but if you're in a DAW that does support external control voltage like Logic, all you have to do is drag and drop the Reason Rack plugin as a MIDI effect on your device, set up the control voltage accordingly, you can just route this up to whatever you'd like, and then on the inputs for your different devices, so let's say Serum on the modulation input, all you have to do is on that drop down hit control voltage input and select the input you'd like to use, and then you could use the external control voltage. So super simple to set up in other DAWs, but just note that that is not currently supported inside of Ableton Live. But that's something that'll probably be added to Ableton in the future. Okay, so that is all for the MIDI outputs inside of Reason. There's a lot of different options there. Definitely recommend taking some time to mess around with it. Use the player devices to get started with songs. Use the different drum machine sequencers to create old school drum breaks. You can bring those back into Ableton and use your traditional Ableton workflows as well. So thanks for checking out the video. I'll see you in the next one.